in today's video we are going to discuss uh different topics four topics actually four positions from book excelling at positional chess by jacob packard this book is uh, very good uh, regarding positional understanding and uh, i would suggest you people to have this book because this is very helpful actually it uh, discusses the positional tactical thoughts also and the process is also a very well written book okay we have first position in front of us from this book and here it is wise to move i want you in, i'm going to give you people just a little understanding of this position black is threatening the white bishop over here and white has two best moves oh, sorry uh, whether he can uh, bishop can move to e2 or c2 white screen is also threatening black's bishop and uh, there is an other move also for white and that is sorry that white can take this pawn and i want you people to assess this position let's assess this position in front of us this pawn if we look at can be corner at any time white species have activity but black species have also activity what is the problem with black position this pawn is protected by the bishop but but this bishop is weak as it is being threatened by the queen this pawn of black is also weak this pawn over here on d6 is also weak this is the problems uh, regarding pawns in black's position and you understand the position of black's bishop also that it is being threatened by the queen white's queen what problem uh, white has in this position his king is on the rook's file and his bishop is being threatened at present immediately white has not castled yet if we look at the weak placement then white side is at present badly placed over here like black bishop but if you thoroughly assess this position there is no proper immediate threat except this to bishop of white so you are playing with white i have given you three options you can play the move bishop e2 bishop c2 or i want you to calculate that can you take this pawn over here on b5 then you can pick up this bishop like this is it possible or what do you think that bishop should move back to e2 or c2 instead of it and this is called the first position topic was oversight and this was positional tactical oversight as per jacob agard here white thought that he can pick up this pawn and then he can pick up this bishop over here of black but he did not calculate black's defense bishop to c2 and bishop to e2 were the best moves both of them although after these moves black was going to play this move e3 but white can just castle this pawn would not be going anywhere but he took the pawn over here sorry over here on b5 and i want you people to find the best defense for black in this position and why this was a mistake 
Have you guessed it? This was played in the game actually. Because now after bishop into b5, which he, he thought that he is picking the bishop. Sorry. This bishop was free. Now you see the black's defense. Yes. Rook e5. And the queen has to move. Queen to h6. Now a into b5. Queen to b5. Although it seems that white has pawn majority, but now black species are too much active over here. This position, the best move was bishop e2. And if he still goes for, the first thing was black was going to do was going to protect his knight, sorry, his bishop on d5. And how he was going to do that? He was going to play the move knight e5. White would just simply castle. Then, then bishop comes, comes over, over here, here. exchanging the bishops b b to c4 now you see this knight would be coming over here but in return black has very strong center but this should be equal and that was a blunder in the game and this is the oversight we do in our games you have, you to, have calculate to calculate thoroughly, thoroughly the, the, your, your opponent's defense. defense. He missed he out this rook e5 move and, and took over here. here. So remember, remember to calculate, to calculate thoroughly, thoroughly your, your opponent's, opponent's defense. defense. We move we to move our to next, next position. position. This game was played between uh, uh, Jackson versus Agard in Denmark 1995. Jacob Agard was playing black. Here you have two options. You can capture this knight. After this pawn captures, you can capture this pawn. Or simply, you can immediately go and capture this pawn. And I want you people to pause and think. Now you have to choose between two captures. What do you think that what is the best capture for black over here? Remember that white is controlling this file. White rook is controlling this file. Black king is very advanced. It, he is going to play the move f6 also. But the problem, the problem is that, is that if you let, if you let this knight go, go, it can give you the check also. also. The king would have to, have move. to move. So, I want I you want people, people to just, just pause and pause think and that which get capture, capture is the best one. one. And here, here comes, comes calculation actually. actually. The point is point that, that why, why you are going, you are to, going capture to capture this pawn, pawn the reason behind is that, that these are these three are connected, connected pawns. pawns. And you have, you have one, one passed, passed pawn, pawn over, over here, here, which would be going would forward. forward. It would it seem would that, that taking the knight. knight would be an easy job, but after pawn bishop, and you take this pawn, the position is equal because white takes this rook pawn. And if instead of you taking this pawn, you went out for this pawn, then white has this passed pawn, and it becomes equal. Because, because white is going to play, play the move over here, he is going to push his pawns. If your king can't come over here due to this check, and the game becomes equal. But have you taken this pawn now? These are two isolated pawns of white. Instead of blacks, these two connected pawns. And this was played in the game.
and why this is better because now after rook g7 check king has f3 rook h7 going for the check over here on h3 and picking up the rook so rook b1 check first king h2 now again check rook b2 check king g1 now first rook g2 check forcing the king to move over here but he moves this way now he comes over here rook f1 now rook c2 going after this pawn black tries desperately by giving the check but now king g4 hitting the rook rook c3 challenging the rook but now if you had not captured on this b3 at that time you would not be able to pick this pawn for free and bishop into a4 and in the long run white was unable to hold this game and the black jacoba guard won the game so remember to keep in your mind if you have three connected pawns try to break them this is the idea if you have a connected pawns try to break them three connected pawns or four connected pawns try to break them although there are some certain rules where there is a passed pawn and you have to take it that is a must but if the position is round about you have an edge try to break the connected pawns so i hope you have understood this concept also now you move to our next position and here this is uh, about the better placement the topic is that the better placement of your pieces here if you see regarding this is sicilian defense white knight is better placed this knight is also doing good job controlling this square and this square this rook is doing good job this queen is hitting the liability of black d6 over here and it is also preventing black to play this move bishop to f6 so this is also well placed this is not bad properly and if you look at this bishop this is not also properly developed and what is the black threat in this position the black threat in this position for example is that if you play any normal move he might be playing this move rook to e5 his rook would be opened his queen is on active square or he may just go for this move pawn push or instead he can just play the move rook e8 or rook fd8 but just for an instance we'll look for that he is going to play the move knight to e4 e5 this might be the black's next move but you have to develop one of your pieces this are this which piece you are going to develop and how you are going to develop that it is also doing the defensive job and it is also doing the attacking job i'm going to make your task easy your these two pawns are weak if knight gets out of the way this pawn on c2 gets weak and this pawn is also being threatened by queen this bishop is eyeing this pawn a2 whenever you moves your knight and on the next move black might be taking your knight also and then he would sacrifice his pawn over here on d6 and he just plays the move bishop to f6 to get more activity 
So you, how you can counter all of these plans of black? By developing, I'm going to give you the hint and that is the bishop. That it does the defending job, protecting these two pawns. And also do a attacking job. And here, Spittler properly assessed this position. This game was played between Spittler versus uh, Sokolov in Alista in 1994 in Sicilian defense. And he played the move Bishop to c4. White had a structural advantage due to his control over b5. But his pieces were still not ideally placed. So he developed his bishop. And what he's going to do now, how to move rook f e8, developing the rook. Then I'm going to take it, going to play the blue bishop f6. Then this bishop will be on long, long diagonal. One no guess. Now, we are going to protect both of these pawns. Remember, bishop b3. And now the bishop on b3 is very important piece. Now, I am going to flip the board for you people. The bishop is very important piece, white's bishop. Over here. This protecting both of these two pawns, e2 and c2. How you can attack it? You can attack bishop when your knight is over here. Sorry. When your knight is on a5, as you can't move your knight over here because it is duly protected by the knight and the rook. So, what you are going to do? Escolo played a good two. Queen c5. His plan was he was going to play the move knight a5, attacking the bishop. I'm going to again flip the board, and this is a very crucial position. And every move was best one. Black is threatening to play the move knight to a5 and hitting the bishop. How you can counter it? How you can counter this move? You know the threat. Black is black has moves the queen to c5. He wants to play the move knight to a5 and want to pick up your bishop. How you counter this move? And after that, he is threatening to give the check over here. As this knight will not be in the way of the queen and the rook. How can you counter all of these threats by developing one of your pieces? Position understanding. How you counter threat by developing one of your pieces? And the best move in this position, which was played, was rook d3. And it counters all of the threats. Because if you black plays the move knight a5 now, it would be a blunder because now rook c3. And where queen has to move. If it moves to queen f2, now first we can see it. And bishop has to take to protect this pawn. But now, I have some check. Rook into e7. And queen into d6. And white has a winning advantage. So you counter the threat of knight e5. So that's why black played the move over here, b5 in this position. And in the long run, Fiddler was able to win this game. We move to our last position. And it is uh, the point of this position is that when uh, we are going to check it from the black side, 
when you are above in activity create more activity for your pieces this is the concept of this position at present was threatening to pick up this bishop but if you look at that black has one extra pawn which at present white rook is stopping white rook is stopping it but white has these two double pawns and black has still not castled and you have to place your one of the pieces at such a good scale that threatens for example remember the first move you are going to calculate is the threat the moves which create threats for your opponents so what move you are going to play i'm going to give you uh, an option this rook is doing a good job protecting the pawn this bishop is at present well placed you are up in material so that's why you are going not going to exchange your queens this knight is doing a very good job protecting this square and protecting this bishop this rook is also uh, well placed but now you have to come up with a plan you are up in material your pc position are good but you have have to create more threats for white and how you can create these threats i'm going to give you two options one is queen to e8 threatening the rook the second move is queen b6 threatening this check on b1 so which move you are going to prefer queen to b6 or queen to e8 and the, remember this is the critical point of the game and black has to play understand his advantages and we have understood that he had to improve your his queen so one move is threatening the rook over here second move is going to b6 threatening this check in the game the move was played queen b6 but queen e8 was much better than that why and the Okay, but now you play the move e4. You can't take the pawn. For example, if you take it now, bishop into e4. The problem is that you can't take this bishop, and black would be holding everything. So, so queen would have would to move have to, to back. back queen e2 now no, bishop gets, gets out, out of the threat, threat of knight, knight. sorry knight of. white has played counter by playing c4 but now a4 and this was the best version but this move was also good queen b6 white does not has the time to take this bishop because if he takes the bishop now knight into knight queen into d5 and queen check king has to move and white's rook has been falling and black is completely winning so he went out for castle now rook f8 white's queen is being pinned to this bishop so queen moved 
and in the long run black was able to win this position so from today's video you have understood that what are the positional nonces how to evaluate your position your pcs and how to better place that so if you like my video kindly hit the subscribe button also hit the bell icon button and kindly like the video thank you very much